I think it's undervalued here in Washington. Um, it broke the established rules of the Middle East. It ended the famous three no's, uh, no peace, no recognition, no negotiation with Israel. It's been a major geopolitical shift, which means it went away from the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, centric to an Arab-Persian, Arab-Iranian centric um, uh, uh, focus now if you will, Sunni versus Shiite. And I think this started out initially as um, if to fight to come together against Iran, but it's developed into not only great trade relationships, but unlike the cold peace with Jordan and Egypt, this is a, a warm peace. Uh, Israelis are welcomed in these countries. Um, so this is truly something that's extraordinary. And unfortunately, I think maybe because it was um, initiated um, by, the, by, by the Trump administration, the Biden administration has really kind of suffocated it and I think is missing a huge opportunity. I think it undervalues the importance here here, because it keeps going back to the tried and true um, uh, failure of uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as the Gordian knot to untie of what's here. The Palestinians are still wagging the dog um, of the Middle East. Um, but that's how the Americans see it. But that's not how the Middle East sees it. And especially with America um, being perceived as withdrawing from the region and maybe withdrawing from Syria and Iraq, this Abraham Accords if handled correctly by the United States, could be incredibly important for American national security interests. So given what you've just said, Eric, regarding, you know, the new Middle East, these, uh, you know, warm ties between a number of nations and what you said about the US, how much, you know, realistically can we expect these relations to continue to grow uh, over the next few years? Well, the big uh, a country is Saudi Arabia. Now, Bahrain, you must remember, would never have gone into this relationship without the approval of the Saudis. And so what should be going on now is, is Secretary of State Blinken should be dealing with, uh, you know, MBS and trying to get them on board. Certainly they should be getting Oman on board. Um, the problem is there's a large portion of the um, uh, Democratic foreign policy wing that has a lot of animosity, especially ever since the Khashoggi um, affair. Um, and again, in the Middle East, uh, you're not dealing with uh, Democrats with a little d. You have only one little D Democrat, that's Israel. Everybody else you take as shared interests and the shared interests for America should be to bring the Saudis on board. The Saudis have reformed themselves, maybe not as much as we'd like, but a lot, certainly compared to Iran. And so uh, I think it's really, really important um, to get Saudi Arabia and Oman as the next two countries. Yeah. Uh, maybe wait.